Welcome to Southern Hills Hospital Orthopedic Spine Unit. My name is Joshua Scott and I'm the manager of the Orthopedic Spine Unit here at Southern Hills Hospital. So while you're with us here on the unit, you will receive a visit daily from a nurse leader so you can talk to them about the care that you're receiving and making sure that you are made as comfortable as possible. Your care team will be rounding on you every at least once every hour to make sure your needs are met, you know, if you have any pain, if you need to go to the bathroom, anything like that, you need to be repositioned in the bed or get up and move around. They're here to, to okay. work with you every every day, every hour. Knock, knock. My role here as the leader is to make sure that I am a resource to our staff, that your stay here is as comfortable as we can possibly make it, and to ensure that things are done on a timely basis and a timely manner for you and your care. If you have any concerns while you're here on our unit, we are 100% happy I can come and visit with you. Any one of our care team can come and visit with you. Anybody from the leadership team will come and visit with you to make sure that all of your concerns and all your needs are met. Again, welcome to Southern Hills Hospital. We are super excited to see you here. Hi, my name's Beth. I'm a nurse at Southern Hills Hospital, and this is the pre-operative joint replacement orthopedic class. We are here to teach you about ways to prevent infection, ways to prevent blood clots or DVTs, and ways to redu reduce your risk for falls. We also um, try to get you to be open to answering questions, asking questions, and to be an advocate for yourself. That's how you have a good outcome for your orthopedic joint replacement. There are multiple people here in the hospital who take care of you besides doctors and nurses. We have physical therapists, we have lab technicians, we have respiratory therapy, we have environmental services. We all work together to take care of you. We work together as a well-oiled team. Many of us have been here for quite a few years. I've been at Southern Hills for a little over 11 years and I've worked with a lot of people for that same amount of time. We are color-coded at Southern Hills. The nurses wear this color blue. It's a royal blue. It's an easy way for you to identify who's taking care of you by the color that they're wearing. The CNAs or healthcare technicians wear a dark teal. Physical therapy wears light blue. A lot of times somebody will tell me that, so I don't know, somebody came in and turned off my oxygen and they don't remember their name. They can tell me what color they were wearing so I know who to go talk to about who touched their oxygen. A week before surgery, you start preparing to come to the hospital. You should have already asked your doctors about risks and benefits. We talk about risks, the blood clots, the infection risk, and your risk for falls. We also talk about the benefits you're gonna get. You're gonna get more mobility back. That's the whole reason you're having this joint replacement, to reduce your pain and increase your quality of life. Make sure you, your doctor has an extensive list of your medications. It includes all of your prescription medications, your over-the-counter medications, any food type supplements you take, for example, garlic capsules, any herbal supplements, any homeopathics. We need to know all of those medications before you have your surgery. A few days before your surgery, you start your pre-admit process. Watching this class or taking this class is one way to start your pre-admit process. You will get a call from a nurse just the day before your surgery to let you know what time. They will review your medications. About three days before surgery, we like you to come in and meet with a preoperative nurse. They discuss your case, they give you some more information, they ask you about your medications again. One reason we ask about your medications frequently is we want to make sure everything is correct. You also want to make sure that you have all of your labs and your EKGs done that your doctor asked you to have before. I personally carry a copy of mine because my doctor's not really good about electronic sending. If your doctor's very good at it, you don't have to worry. You're not going to be cleared from sur for surgery until your doctor has all of those prerequisites in place. You can also go online and pre-register at the hospital. It is just basic information. You can come in as well and register, which we're not recommending at this time because of the COVID virus, but you can come in. Registration is open from five in the morning till five at night. They will screen you and they will ask that you wear a face covering to protect yourself and others. And you can do a pre-registration at that time. The day before surgery, you're gonna get a call from a nurse. They will review your medications again. They'll make sure that you know when to stop eating and drinking, which is at midnight before your surgery. They review your medication list and they talk a little bit more about your surgery. And they'll give you your surgery time. 
make sure that you come on the correct time for your surgery because surgeries run back to back and there's multiple doctors who do surgeries. So we need to keep the schedule running smoothly. So the evening before surgery, you're gonna try and get some rest. It's kind of hard because surgery is a little scary. At midnight, stop eating and drinking. No mints, no ice, no sips of anything unless the nurse tells you. Many people who take blood pressure or heart medications will be instructed to take their medication in the morning with a small sip of water. That's acceptable. Those are the only medications or only things you're going to take. You can brush your teeth, rinse and spit, do not swallow any water. No smoking or tobacco use either. You want to bring comfortable clothes to the hospital, things that are easy to get on and off. If you have bad joints now, you're probably already doing that. You want to make sure that you have shoes that are going to stay on your feet. Don't bring flip-flops because they come off your feet easily and put you at a risk for falls. The hospital has um, a uniform that one of the local surgeons has sponsored. So anybody who gets a joint replacement, a knee or hip joint replacement, gets a t-shirt and shirt. So you'll see people walking in the hall in the hospital with the same uniform as you. That lets you know that you're part of the same team. You all got a joint replacement. They um, also make sure that you're bringing any dentures, hearing aids, glasses. We need you to be able to eat, see, and hear while you're at the hospital. Be careful with those items because they can be easily lost and we want you to make sure that you have anything you bring with you that you take home with you. Be careful with your personal items that you bring. Don't bring anything of value. You're responsible for everything and small jewelry is easily lost. Earrings, rings, necklaces, leave it home. That's your best bet. You can bring a phone. You can bring a computer if you like. We do have um, internet here that's available to patients. It doesn't interrupt any of the heart monitors anymore like it used to, but be careful with them. They can fall on the floor. They can get wet. They're your responsibility. Be sure to bring a list of your medications with you. Don't bring any with you. We don't need you to bring them. We have everything available here. And that includes your whole list. A lot of items we won't have if you're taking herbal supplements, but one of the reasons they want to know about herbal supplements is things like St. John's wort, which a lot of us take for mood elevation, for mood stab stabilization, interacts with anesthesia, something we don't want. Things like glucosamine and chondroitin, a lot of us take for our joints, interacts with our clotting mechanisms. You want to make sure your doctors know that you're on those medications so they can tell you which ones to stop and when. You do want to bring, when you register, your identification. It has to be a photo one. Your insurance card and a form of um, co-payment if you have one. That is between you, the hospital, and your insurance company. I have no idea whose co-payment is what, and they will ask you about that. They're also going to put a small ID band on you. So make sure that you bring some glasses if you need them. I have to wear cheaters. You want to make sure your information is correct. If your information is not correct, your insurance will get a bill for the wrong person and they won't pay it. You want to make sure everything is taken care of properly. We are a tobacco-free campus. So if you're a smoker or a tobacco user of any kind, one, let your doctor know so we can get you a nicotine patch. And two, you can't use anything here. You can't smoke, you can't chew tobacco, you can't use vaping pens in any inhaling tobacco products at all. If you have family and friends that are smokers or tobacco users, they have to leave the hospital campus to use them. So make sure you keep us informed so we can keep you as comfortable as possible. So another statement about medications is the nurse will tell you which ones to take. Don't take anything that the nurse does not tell you to take. If you're diabetic, don't take your diabetic medication. Don't put any makeup on or contact lenses. Your makeup will just end up all over your face and contacts will fall out or end up dried up and curled up in your eye. You can put all that back on after surgery. The day of your surgery, you want to arrive at your scheduled time. You might want to take a few extra minutes because of the COVID virus. They're screening people. They're making sure everybody has a mask on to to keep you safe and other patients safe. You're gonna come in, when you come into the hospital, admitting is to the left. So come in, go to the left, and that's where your process starts. It's also where we kind of start talking a little bit of medical terminology that can be cute, confusing to some patients and family and friends. Let us know if we say something that doesn't make sense. We know what the words mean, you may not. Once your admitting process is done, they're gonna take you to the pre-op area. We call it the um, 
we call it just the pre-op area, but they come in, they're going to start an IV on you, they're going to put you in a hospital gown, and we know hospitals' gowns are not the most comfortable. They'll give you some blankets to keep you comfortable. They're also going to give you a couple items. They're going to give you some yellow socks. These help us let, let the staff know that you are a fall risk. They have grippers on them to keep you safe, but it also helps us keep an extra eye out for if we see a pair of dangling legs out of a bed, we know to go check on the patient because they are a fall risk. We want them to get up safely. They're also going to put something called TED hose on you. These help prevent blood clots. They're stretchy, they're very tight, and they squeeze and help keep the blood moving. We don't want any blood clots, so we ask that you wear these as much as possible. But they do prevent blood clots. So keep them on. You should have them on right after surgery. And um, once we change your dressing, we'll put one on the surgical leg. We'll also put something called SCDs on you. It stands for sequential compression device. The non-surgical leg is going to get a calf one. Wraps around your leg like this and secures with a Velcro strap. Maybe not. And then it connects to a machine at the end of the bed. This is your leg, by the way. The biggest thing is we want you to wear them as much as possible to prevent blood clots, but it also puts you at a high risk for falls because you're connected to the end of the bed. If physical therapy tells you you're clear to get it by yourself and you have these on, you swing your legs over, try and walk, you're going to fall. So always call for help. There's multiple places on the bed. There's um, handheld remotes that you can reach to make sure that the nurse or our CNA knows to come and help you. They're going to start an IV, an intravenous line, into your arm, and that helps keep fluids going, gives us a place to give you medications. The anesthesiologist is going to come and talk to you. They'll ask about previous surgeries, nausea issues, and they help take care of those during surgery. The anesthesiologist is with you the whole time you're in surgery. The doctor is going to come in and mark the uh, area that you're going to have surgery on. If it's your left knee, they're going to put their initials on your left knee. While you're in the pre-op area, your family member or friend can stay with you, one person, until you go into surgery. Once you go into surgery, you have about five people taking care of just you. You have your surgeon, you have an assistant, you have the anesthesiologist, you have a surgical technician, you have a surgical nurse, and you have a surgical circulating nurse. I have been here, like I said, for almost 11 years. Those people have been here almost the same amount of time. They're very good at what they do. The fact that everybody's been here for years says that Southern Hills is a good place to work and a good place to be. We work well together. I've had surgery here as well, and they've taken care of me, so I know they're very good at their job. After surgery, the surgeon or the physician's assistant will come out and speak to a family member in the waiting room. They will update them and tell them how they did, what surgery, what happened in surgery, and how long the patient should be in the recovery room. We call the recovery PACU. It stands for Post Anesthesia Care Unit, and that's where the patient stays until they're ready to come up to the orthopedic floor. We have single patient rooms. You will not have a roommate. They have a bathroom with, door that, with a door that locks. There is, we're a 46 bed unit, and we have a physical therapy gym. So there's a lot of things that make you very comfortable for your stay in the hospital. You might have a drain when you come up to the unit. We have three different types of drains that you have. One is a striker drain. It helps drain fluids and it helps reduce the inflammation in the, the new joint. You can reinfuse fluid if you have a striker drain, so which is a, re a really nice benefit. Some people have what's called a hemovac. It looks like an accordion. We squish it down and seal it, and as it re-expands, it pulls a, makes a gentle suction and pulls out excess fluid. It helps reduce the inflammation and um, fluid in the, the surgical area, which helps reduce pain. The other one is a Jackson Pratt, and it looks like a big egg. Same thing. We squish it down, seal it, and as it expands, it pulls excess fluid out. Your doctor will use them based on your body and your surgery. Not everybody will have them. So I talked about the three things that we want to prevent while you're here. We want to prevent blood clots, we want to prevent infections, and we want to prevent your risk for falls. We use the socks for your, your risk for falls. We have call lights that 
signal in the hall that says this patient's at risk for falls. You have an armband that says you're at risk for falls. That helps us identify patients. We ask for your help. One way that you can reduce your risk for fall is use the call light. Follow the directions that the nurses and the physical therapy and the technicians tell you. We tell you that information for your safety. We want to reduce your risk for blood clots. We use the TED hose. We use the SCDs. We use activity. Getting up and moving helps reduce your risk for blood clots. We use, also use chemicals. Aspirin, Lovenox, Xarelta, or some of the chemicals we use. Your surgery and your body determines what your doctor is going to prescribe for you and for how long. Infection reduction, we do the shower before. Wash your hands. Make sure that everybody that comes in contact with you washes or sanitizes their hands. Up and down the halls in the hospital and in the rooms, there are sanitizing stations. The rooms have two sinks in them. There is no reason for anybody that comes in contact with you that does not sanitize their hands. They may be coming into the room doing this. That means they have put the sanitizing cream or foam on and they're sanitizing their hands before they come in and touch you. Don't hesitate to send somebody back to the sink or the foaming station to make sure that you have clean hands touching you. Pain management. You're having surgery, you're going to have pain. Do not think that your pain is going to be zero. We try and keep you as comfortable as possible, and we do that by communicating you with you and using different devices to help you control your pain. We use a scale from zero to 10. We'll frequently come in and ask you, what is your pain on a scale from zero to 10? 10 is the worst pain you've ever had, zero is none. Don't expect to have zero, and we don't expect you to have zero. We try and keep your pain between a three and a five. That way you can get up and move, you can sleep, and you can be comfortable. If you let your pain get out of control, you will not be sleeping, your heart rate will be up, your breathing will be up, your blood pressure will be up, and you won't heal quickly. It helps you heal. We do not have to use medication. We can reposition you. We can put ice on you. There's a lot of things that we can do that have nothing to do with giving you medicine. But medicine works. If you use it properly, you won't have an issue with it. We also use an incentive spirometer. We call it an IS, or your breathing machine. Everybody's going to ask you if you're using it. It helps prevent pneumonia, and it's pretty easy to use. A nice, slow, easy breath in, hold it for a second, and let it out. We'd like you to do it three times every 10 minutes while you're awake. Also, while you're awake, do some foot pumps. This easy. Just move your foot up and down. That gets the muscle moving and gets the blood moving. It helps prevent blood clots. So things that happen after surgery that are very common, nausea and vomiting, constipation, anemia, lightheaded and dizziness. Not everybody experiences them, and some people experience them at different degrees. We have medications that help with the nausea and vomiting. If you are nauseous, we don't give you food. We usually do what we call clear liquids. The, you can eat when you're ready, and, but if you're nauseous or vomiting, if you put food in, it comes out with more. And then you get dehydrated and we have another problem. So take your time, listen to your nurse, and listen to your body. If you have a, something that works at home, if you like ginger ale or flat Coke, let us know. We'll see if we can get it for you to keep you comfortable. Constipation happens because you're not as active, you're not eating and drinking as you normally do, and you're taking pain medicine. Make sure you eat a good healthy diet and lots of fluids. We need to drink two to four of these a day, especially in the desert. This is the container you're going to have in the hospital that we're going to put water in for you. Make sure you're drinking lots of it. Lots of fruits and vegetables. Order good food from the menu. Everybody goes to the bathroom, everybody poops. Not the funnest thing to talk about, but keep a communication with your nurse. If you have a problem with constipation, let us know so we can give you something to help get you going. Most of the doctors start you on a stool softener to help prevent constipation. We encourage you to continue at home until you're back to a normal bowel habit at home. Anemia happens because you had surgery. It very rarely happens because technology now, surgeries are very quick and short and blood loss is minimal. But if you do have an issue with anemia, we can give you iron, we can transfuse blood if we need to. It very rarely happens. 
Lightheaded and dizziness happens because, mostly because the chemicals we're giving you. We're giving you anesthesia, we're giving you pain medicine. That makes us all a little bit dizzy. But you also are sitting down or laying down a lot more than you do at home. When you get up quickly, your blood pressure drops and that makes you dizzy. Make sure you tell on everybody if you are dizzy. Physical therapy will come and sit you up and they'll ask you if you're dizzy. Because if you're dizzy and they stand you up, you're gonna fall. We don't want you to fall. So be sure you're communicating well with your staff. Physical therapy will see you the day of surgery unless you have surgery late in the day. Their goal is to get you up and get you moving as quickly as possible. They teach you how to get out of bed, how to use your new limb or new joint that you have, whether it's a knee, hip, shoulder. They get you moving as safely and as comfortably as possible. They teach you exercises. They teach you um, tricks to use. You get equipment like this. This is a long shoehorn. It just helps make your life a little bit easier. They will teach you how to use it and how to get your clothes on and off properly. They will take you up to stairs if you need to. They can take you into the physical therapy gym if they need to. They also can help control your pain. They put ice on you, they reposition you, and they communicate with your nurse before they even get you out of bed. They ask how you're doing, if you're dizzy, how your pain is. If you haven't had a pain pill for a while, they'll ask that we give you a pain pill before you do physical therapy. So when you have a physical therapy session, you can participate fully. While you're in the hospital and when you go home, make sure you're eating properly. Make sure you get adequate protein, iron, and fluid. Adequate protein is easy to do. High quality, low fat protein. Chicken, beef, lamb, pork, whatever it is that you choose to eat, or eggs. You can also do veg vegetable-based um, proteins. That's absolutely fine. Don't decide a week before surgery that you're gonna be healthy and become a vegan. It's not good for you. Put your body into a little bit of shock. While you're in the hospital, order nutritious food. You have a wide variety of food that you get to pick. Also, one hint I like to give patients is when you order your food and there's not something on the menu that you like, you can write something in. The staff tries to get what you like. If it's something they don't have, they can't get it. But if you want a ham sandwich and you write it down, they'll try and get it for you. Your nurse can also request things from the, host from the kitchen. We have nurses that specialize in discharge planning. Your discharge planning is actually starting as you're watching this class. You want to make sure that you have your house ready to go and the nurses that discharge plan help make sure that you're ready to go and that you have what you need at home. We do make a recommendation of getting a shower chair before you have surgery. Most insurances don't cover that. And a handheld shower. It makes keeping yourself clean a lot safer. They will um, arrange outpatient home health. They'll arrange outpatient therapy if your doctor and physical therapist recommend it and if your insurance covers it. So they work with your doctor, your insurance company, and your physical therapist here in the hospital to make sure you're going home safely. They will meet with you while you're in the hospital. So some frequently asked questions that we have is when can I eat? You can eat when you feel like it. Some people are, uh, I don't want to eat till tomorrow morning. Some people want a hamburger and french fries right off the bat. It just depends on your body. Everybody's different. You can use cell phones in the hospital. It does not interrupt any of our, our monitors. Just make sure you're being polite. Don't talk too loud. Don't talk about too much personal information so everybody knows your business. Be respectful of other people. The um, internet is accessible online so you can bring a tablet or a laptop they work as well sometimes your throat is sore because we do what's called intubate you during surgery they put a tube down your throat to help you breathe it can irritate your throat sometime if it's really uncomfortable let us know we can get some ice we can get some broth we can do a throat lozenge we can do a spray the cafeteria is located on the bottom floor, so family members can go. Patients are not allowed into the cafeteria. Family members can go. Usually most patients who have joint replacements are in the hospital anywhere from 12 hours to three days. Depends on your body, your surgery, and your doctor. But that's the normal, 12 hours to three days. 
You can start driving when you're cleared from your doctor. You have to be able to operate your vehicle safely. You have to be able to go from gas to brake without saying ow, because if you pull back on a brake, you could hit somebody. You have to be able to drive. If you have shoulder replacement and you can't use both hands, you can't drive. You also have to be off of opioid or pain medications because it's against the law to drive under the influence. And that's what those are. So I thank you for coming or viewing the video and the class. If you have questions, you can contact the orthopedic unit at Southern Hills. Our manager is Josh Scott. He's available to answer, a quest answer questions as well as all the nurses. We're well trained and we take good care of our patients. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carla B. I'm a physician assistant or PA. I am here on the fifth floor, the ortho and neuro floor. My job is to be the liaison between your surgeon and their surgical team while you're in the hospital. Okay, oh, pain's yeah. under control. Yeah, oh yeah, they're okay. doing really well. I keep an eye on you. Make sure that everything's going well, that everything that they would like to have happen with you in the hospital happens. And if there's anything that needs to be communicated with your surgeon, I'm the one that does that communication. Look forward to having you here. Hi, my name is Sierra Sedin, and I'm the Director of Therapy Services here at Southern Hills Hospital. Our goal is to make sure that you understand everything you need to know about your surgery, we answer any questions you might have, and that you have a safe transition home once your surgery is complete. While you're here, you'll likely have two different types of therapies. One is physical therapy, and another is occupational therapy. For physical therapy, you'll learn how to move around and walk with your new joint. For occupational therapy, they'll help you do the things that you normally do every day at home. Things like bathing, dressing, and grooming. We hope that this video answers any questions that you may have, but please feel free to reach out. Again, thank you so much for choosing Southern Hills Hospital, and we look forward to working with you.